atmospheres. Atmospheres. In order for the glory of God to come in a church, your home, or anywhere that you're representing God, the atmosphere got to be right. Welcome to Prophetic War and Decree with Prophetess Miranda. Get ready to meet the prophetess, teacher, prophetic coach and mentor as she travels the world sharing the healing power of God. Now, let's join Prophetess Miranda. Atmospheres need to be cleaned. They got to clean it up. Mm -hmm. They got to be cleared out. So let me ask you this. What are you carrying? What did you bring in here today? Mm -hmm. If I scan the room, tell me what you, what you did last night. Where were you? What kind of prayer life you had last night? Did you bring glory in with you? Did you bring prayer? Are you stacking the glory? Were you mad last night? Did you cuss somebody out last night? Did you think to repent? Because if you didn't repent, you brought it in here. Uh-huh. What you got? When last time you decided, I don't need no man, I don't need no woman, I'm going to please myself. Okay, so guess what? You bought your trash in here. And you won't know why the glory ain't. But thank God for some praying warriors. And see, you be want to know why you be waddling all on the floor. Because when you come in a glory atmosphere, it can't stand. It'll make you flip on that floor and don't know kicking and screaming. You be trying to figure out what is going on with her. You, you don't have a clue. But on the flip side, what if she was abused last night? You don't know what people bring in the service. That's why intercessors got to go before. Mm -hmm. Atmospheres attract spirits in a house. So let's just say you just had a big fight with your family, and they come to your house, you had this big fight. Do you know unless somebody gets peace in that, do you know that angry and chaos spirit is in that house? That's why no smoke or glory is in there. If it's any smoke, it's probably the fire from the hell that's been in that house. Uh-huh. Let me give you an example. You know, atmospheres can hinder a spiritual house or a physical house. It can. There are times I can remember we'll go in for deliverance, and there are times before I minister, I say, oh, no, 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 I don't like this atmosphere. I can see people look like they look like they, they leaning. They look like they won't fall asleep because demons don't want them to receive the word because they know they're going to come out. When a person in authority walks in a room, it commands, it makes demons start shaking because they know they're getting ready to come out. You ever have, you know that sometimes in some of our delivery services, people just start manifesting. Nobody ain't doing nothing to them and they just start manifesting. Uh-huh. Because they know they're on the way out. You know, when demons start talking through a person, you know, they, you know they're scared they're getting ready to come out. Mm-hmm. That means there's an authority that is there, so now they're going to try to start talking and manifesting. You, or they'll start trying to excessively cry so that way you can get thrown off. I know one time this one lady, every time she come in, she just lay on the floor. I said, look, stop that. I said, because if you do it again, I'm going to put some water on you because I know it ain't right. Yes, ma'am. All of a sudden, she was able to come into the, out of the spirit. You know why? Because it, did, it didn't want me to get in to know what was on the inside. Uh -huh. See, but you have to know when God gives you authority over something and know when he says it's time to come out. So that's why whenever you go into deliverance service, you should always be praying and asking the Lord, God, I'm, I'm looking for a mirror. I'm looking to come out. Don't get disheartened if it don't happen that day. Just you make sure you platform things. Make sure you fast. Make sure you pray. Don't just go to no deliverance service all willy-nilly open, enough for you to receive demons from somebody else. You got to fast and pray. You got to talk to the Lord and say, God, I'm walking in here. Let me give you an example. This is the third or fourth time this has happened. I remember going to a place. I could feel the glory before I got in the place. I hadn't even put my hand on the door. I said, whoa, what is this? 
See, because when you are a glory carrier, you can sense it immediately. When like kind find itself, there is an ignition. Ooh, my, my, my. You know, you have to learn how to stock the atmosphere. See, that's why there's certain times that we have people come in the, in the studio and they pray. It's, it's, it's very common to find somebody stretched out in front, of, in, in front of here praying 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Very, very common. You have to learn to stack it. You stack it because, see, there's going to be people going to come through here. They need deliverance. They need healing. They got emotions. Oh, my God. They got addictions. They need salvation. But if it's stocked with prayer, it's stocked with war, See, when that person come in, oh, they, we can carry them. They just immediately. It's not because they were so prayerful. Half of them don't prayerful at all. They're so tormented by what's going on with them. They just walk in, Lord, just help me. They meet you at the door. Prophetess, I, was, I drove from, from here. I drove from here. And I'm just like, oh, my God. They are not praying. Trust me. They are not praying. They're just like, help me. I need you to help me. Prayer purges an atmosphere. Did you know that? It drives demonic spirits out. Let me give you an example. See, whenever people would leave, somebody would come back. What well, intercessors would come back and clear that atmosphere out so that the next day it would be ready and saturated for the next surge of God. Yeah, that's why the intercessors are going to get there an hour. The intercessor is going to walk the floor while deliverance is going on and in between services. That's why when everybody else going home sleep, intercessors still walk in the floor. You have to clean the house from anger, the spirit of vice, the spirit of confusion. Do you know today we're going to dry some stuff out today? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Atmospheres can have to be prepped for the move of deliverance. Atmospheres have to be sustained. Now, one of the things that God has done, no matter where we go, even if I'm just trying to talk about nice, sweet, little, calm stuff, I've talked to myself, Miranda, you're going to behave yourself. You are not putting your hands on anyone. And that deliverance anointing to start to move, I'll be like, oh, my God, here it comes. It starts. And I'll be like, no, 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 no. True story. So I'm in Florida. Um, we have this timeshare, and they gave me this beautiful room to use for coaching. And I told my daughter, I said, oh, just go to the store. We're good. It's just me and her. I said, we'll be good. And she comes back, and she's like, oh, my God, in coaching, you're slaying the people. I was like, I, I don't know what happened. The Lord said it was her freedom day. You have no, it's not you. It is not you, but that girl has had such a heart for God. I want to be free. That was it. Do you want to be free? Do you got demons you're hiding in your back pocket? Come on. You know, some people like certain demons. You know, they're not ready to get rid of them. Mm -mm. Atmospheres have to be sustained. That's why prayer warriors always got to be on that game. They can't miss a day. You can't miss Monday prayer. You can't miss Thursday. You can't miss it because the minute you miss, whoop, something slip in. Some people tell me, oh, well, no, I didn't pray. I ran out the house. I said, okay. So you left that open door. You notice they talk about being on one accord, right? Meaning your desire. Do you know we have people come in here and, and, for, and immediately they're like, Lord, is there going to be a move today? Lord, I want more of you. They desire healing. They desire that God would touch them. They know that whenever you go in the midst of glory, at any day you can get a revelation about something you've been praying about for years. All of a sudden that download just come. See, because that's glory atmospheres. What have you loosed in your home? Everybody, do an assessment. What have you loosed in your home? Do you know their manifestations can be, can be actually loose in the atmosphere of your home? This is it. Now, you know, Jesus went to the temple, and, you know, he got mad. He wrecked that stuff up. 
That's what he said. He said, because my house should be a house of prayer. But they have defiled the house of God. You know, they was buying and selling and things of that nature. And man, he got upset. It's Matthew 21, verses 12 and, uh, through 14. My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Now, what have you loosed in your house? Let's talk to children today. When last time you had a fight with your, with, with your dad or your mom? And you loose that anger in that house. Yeah, you loose that anger in that house. Do you know those spirits? You know when parents fight in a house? Do you know they loose that anger and that anger go on those children? Yes. The parents may, and if they don't ever come back and say, well, I'm so sorry, and repent, and, and, and pray, and get that thing straight, guess what? It visits the children. So now you got little bit children yelling and screaming and angry because you lose those demonic spirits. You have to understand, atmospheres is something. The more prophetic you become, the more sensitive you are to atmospheres. You know, it's time to call it out. It's time to clean your house. Everybody think about it. Okay, let me get a little more graphic because y'all seem like nobody understanding what I'm saying. Before your before Christ, if that's the house that you went in and Bobo and two couple other your little boyfriends have been through there and you did some stuff in that house, that's why glory ain't in there. That's why it's hard to pray in there. That's why you got night demons still visiting you. That's why you see shadows. That's why you think you're seeing things going up the wall. You ain't cleaning the house out. They spirits is still in there. Why y'all looking at me like I'm crazy? Look, I mean, I can get even more graphic if you just want me to do. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to tell you how to get glory in your house so the blessings of the Lord can overflow and nothing will be hindered in that house. Do you know whenever glory comes in your house, do you know it will cause a peace to rest in your house? I can walk in people's house and I can tell you what kind of, they be thinking they fooling me. And I say, okay, let me just pretend like I'm just a little old lady. That's what they want me to do, you know. Praise the Lord. Oh, this is such a wonderful house. I'll be saying to myself, look at the demons slacking up up in here. I know they be fighting and fussing. I could, I could hear it. Sometimes I could even hear the conversations. I could hear them. Do you know that will affect how you sleep, how you eat, how you digest food, whether the blessings are flowing in that house? Whether or not you got blessed, I mean, the, the minute one check comes, here comes another check and an open door, an open door. Yes, it determines how the love flow in the house. Do you know I can walk in the house and tell if the house is sterile? It feel like a, a, a hospital in there. I'd be like, ain't no love flowing through here. It's cold and hard. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4 <laughs> and 26, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. That means you don't go to bed with that stuff. Because if you do, those demons are going to go to your children. And then you carry it the next day. And then the next day and the next day. And guess what? In that house, you got that spirit of anger and bitterness for months at a time. And then you won't come to me and tell me why y'all ain't, ain't getting along. Because who loosed the anger in there? And who cleaned the house? Who putting glory in there? Amen. I'm just telling you. What you speak and what you do in the house determines the presence of the house. I can tell a house of love. I can tell a house of joy. I can tell when there's a lot of laughter there. There's a presence there. Do you know when you activate foul spirits and foul language in a house, you lose demons in there? Do you know when you lose pornography in the house, it visits the children that come in the house? You know how many men has told me, you know what they tell me? Oh, no, that, that's in the privacy of my home. I said, baby, that thing visiting your son. You just don't know it. And it's going to jump on your daughter soon, even well. See, this is a spirit world. This is a spirit, everybody look at each other and say, this is a spirit world. Yes. yes. Go ahead on and keep that cussing demon there and then want to know why the little two-year-old is cussing. 
because it came from you and went to the two-year-old and the child don't even, I mean, he just pick it up. You think, oh, well, you know, my kids don't, you know, I can, I can, okay, go ahead on and lose that alcohol demon in there and see why at five or six years old, while you're not there, they're going to start drinking. Mm-hmm. You want to know why they have evil and strife communication? Because that's what's in the walls of the house. Atmospheres can kill the word of God. Do you know sometimes, I, I remember walking in the church, I said, Lord, this church smell Baptist. I said, well, I can't do this. I can't do I said, y'all, this ain't the place. This, it smell, it smell stale. I said, this, y'all remember that? Yeah, yeah I, know, I remember. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you know whenever that stale environment is there, you know words cannot be accepted? You know people won't get delivered? The words won't be received? Do you know in, a, in your home when you don't clear up that anger and all that bitterness in there? Do you know your spouse won't receive your words because it's all, it's, it's all mixed in? And it, the anger is still there? So that means you're talking and it's not computing? Oh, I'm trying to talk. To, I'm trying to heal somebody, but nobody listened to me. In Matthew 9 and 25, there's, a, there's an interesting uh, scenario here. After the crowd, Jesus visits Jared's house to heal his daughter. But after the scripture says, after the crowd had been sent outside, Jesus went in and he took the girl by the hand and she got up. The miracles happened after the religious people left. You know, when he really start walking in there, they was all crying and boohooing. Look, you need a healing? Please don't bring all them crying people there. That's the religious group. Put them out, just like Jesus. Find you a faith warrior and let somebody lose some deliverance and some miracles in there. Because according to Matthew 9 and 25, he put them out. And then the miracles start to move. Glory in a home changes things. It changes the atmosphere. It changes the continence of a person. Do you know that? It does. What if I told y'all when I see people, I can see the glory on continents. I can see demons on people. Well, yeah, that's why they think. I be saying to myself, this joker think he can lie to me, and I see that cussing demon coming right out of his mouth. It looked like sometimes his mouth looked like a snake being. I said, oh, so you cuss him. Mm-hmm. It shows. See, you have to understand, in the spirit realm and in glory, your continents show. Let me tell you, you, you got residue, baby. You better come ask me, prophetess, what kind of residue? Because <laughs> trust me, if I say residue, baby, I know what kind it is. I just ain't told you what it was. Oh, yeah. Y'all want me to get your list? Sure. Anger, stealing, bitter. Oh, yeah, cussing demons, homosexual. I'll be like, where you been? Like, where you been? Because you looking some interesting right now. Y'all know I get that from my, one of my mentors. Yeah, yeah. You didn't, yeah, you came around him, baby. He going to tell you what your profile was. You, you better go ahead on and get it together. But see, I learned how to repent before. Oh, yeah, I wasn't dumb. Yeah, I'm going to go up before I walk in that door. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I repent. Yeah, baby, I knew how to get it together. And then they go, hi, hello, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if not, if you don't get it together, uh, he would fall out laughing, right? I was saying to myself, I'm not dumb. You think I'm going to go right before a prophet and let him cut me up? Oh, no, 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 no. Do you know your continents? You know you wear your soul on your continents. Y'all know that junk in your soul, right? You know when you in church, look, but you thinking about Betty Boo and what you and Betty Boo did? Be all on your continents. Y'all think I'm kidding? <laughs> Jesus' continence was altered. In Luke 9 and 29, and it says, And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistening. Woo! Have you ever seen somebody, come on, have you ever seen somebody in the spirit and they just look so beautiful? Sometimes their skin look almost paralyzed. Oh, you don't understand. So the glory will change the atmosphere where you live. 
your countenance on your face. It will even change your skin. Do you know in Deuteronomy 29 and 5, you know the glory carried their clothes and the clothes didn't tear up for, third, for, for, for years and years? Can you? Now, come on. Man, that's, that's real glory, right? They never changed clothes and the clothes didn't. Did, you know, they should have at least started dissipating or something, right? Do you know prayer changes you? You know when a person's been prayerful? Oh, my God, they walk in an authority. They walk in a power. All I got to do is be around them, and I can feel the power from them. Mm -hmm. Intercession will take you to another dimension. That's how come I know people that are warriors. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when people have the weighted glory on them, I remember when I first met Minister Tyler, and I can see it to the day. And, but the Lord wouldn't let me talk to her for months after, till months after. But my goodness, I could see her walking and worshiping, and she was, inter she was part of the intercession team. And I would watch her go back and forth and back and forth. And I saw the glory flowing with her. It looked like she was floating. She looked like she was floating. I said, what is this? She was a hot mess at the time, but the glory still was on her, right? Oh, yeah, it was on her, for sure. I, I asked the pastor, I say, who is that? <laughs> His whole face dropped. He said, I said, who is that? I said, oh, I said I'm, just, I'm just attracted to glory people. I can tell glory people. I can tell people that walk. I can tell people that pray. And he was like, really? I said, oh, yeah, absolutely. Do you know glory will change your love walk? You know, glory will change your capacity for healing. So you got to up your glory. Yeah, you got to change your mind to walk in glory. Gotta change your mind. Thank you for joining us today. You've just watched the Prophetic War and Decree broadcast with Prophetess Miranda. To learn more about Prophetess Miranda, view her event schedule, so into the ministry, and more, visit us online at prophetessmiranda.com. If you would like to view this message in its entirety, and many more like it, visit Prophetess Miranda's YouTube channel and make sure to subscribe.